What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Geek Pantheon. I am Eric, and today I have an exciting new source book for you all, especially for fans of the Twilight Imperium board games, Embers of the Imperium from Edge Studio. Now, I imagine and hope that this is going to be a big entry point into tabletop role-playing games for fans of the Twilight Imperium world, lore, and the board games with its various additions over the years. So a lot of you that are clicking on this video may not be aware of the base tabletop role-playing game system that this source book builds off of, Genesis. So Genesis was originally created by Fantasy Flight Games, there's the logo right there, <laughs> but now is created and continued by Edge Studio, who is still a subsidiary of Asmodee. It just, there was a whole thing that I'm not gonna get into. Anyway, the <laughs> tabletop role-playing game system Genesis had a bit of a break as the restructuring was happened, and this is their first major source book for the Genesis role-playing game system since all of that happened. So it's really exciting to see a new source book for the system, but even more exciting for fans of the Twilight Imperium world because this book is dense. So I will say that this book is broken up into three different sections based on the chapters. Chapters one, two, and three are the players section. That's where you get character creation with the different species and careers, and then the equipment and the vehicles, all that kind of stuff that players are going to be utilizing. Then chapters five and six are the lore dump. If you want a lot of lore about this world and the Twilight Imperium universe, those are the chapters that you want to dive into. And then chapters six and seven are the GM section with the various adversaries and then just a Game Master's toolbox in the form of chapter seven. So the intro for this book provides a ton of lore to get you up to speed on the current state of the world. All the backstory things that your character may know or may not know in terms of the Twilight Imperium universe. If you're somebody like me that's never really dove too deep into the Twilight Imperium lore, then there's going to be a really helpful section of the book. I just always liked the anthropomorphic lion people on the front of the box. I was like, that's cool. I like that universe. And that's about as deep as my knowledge went. So getting to read about the actual lore of the universe was super fun and engaged. But getting into chapter one, and I'm going to keep things at a pretty high level in this video just so it doesn't get too long. You are creating a character who is a Kellerus, which is an agent of the Galactic Council. So think if you're a fan of the Mass Effect series, the Spectres, where you are an agent that goes out on behalf of the council to protect the council's sovereignty. That may be a bit too cynical to take. You, you are a force for good. You're going out to protect the larger galaxy from imminent threats that threaten lives throughout the galaxy or the stability of the galaxy itself. Now, for those of you that aren't super familiar with the Genesis role-playing game system and you're just coming in cold because you like Twilight Imperium, Genesis is a really malleable role-playing game system. You don't have a hard and fast class. You pick a career that informs your career skills. That just means those are cheaper to get, but you can get anything at any given moment. You can build your character really however you want. It's a classless system. You just get a bit of a discount based on your career. Your species does heavily inform things like the amount of starting XP that you have, your starting ability scores, your starting, your starting wounds and strain, which are your two different health point pools, as well as some unique biological aspects of your species. My favorite species in this book, probably, you know I said I love the anthropomorphic lion people based on the box, but the gosh lay, which are fire people that have to be in a environmental containment suit so they don't just burn everyone around them is super cool. And you can break out of your suit to do damage and stuff like that, but you can only be out of your suit for so long because you're going to start taking strain the longer that you're out of your suit. Although, like I said, the Hakan, the lion people, love their look, love their deal. I would probably play one of those, I'm perfectly honest myself. The ideal version of me would play a gosh lay, but I like the lion people too much. I would be a Hakan. The interesting system that they introduced for fans of Genesis or just fans of Twilight Imperium, they bring in a system that's very similar to something that Fantasy Flight Games, and they created the Age of Rebellion Star Wars role-playing game core rulebook with the duty system, you have agenda, which is very similar in that your character, you come up with mechanically your agenda. Why are you an agent for the Galactic Council? Why are you doing this? And there are mechanical things that you do to reinforce that agenda that you then get additional resources from the Galactic Council if you live up to those. I really like this. I like integrating 
character motivations into the mechanics of the game and allowing players that when they live up to their backstory or the reason their character is doing the things that they're doing, you as the GM are empowered to reward them for that mechanically. And then we get into the equipment and vehicles chapters two and three. And these are pretty bog standard. If you're familiar with the Genesis prior to this book, then there is not going to be anything too terribly shocking in terms of the equipment and the vehicles. Although they are, once again, this is the first true space opera source book for Genesis. So even more so, if you're familiar with the Star Wars role-playing game system that Fantasy Flight Games did with their narrative dice system, which is what fuels Genesis as well, you're going to see a lot of overlap really begin to shine through with things like plotting faster than light, courses through space, jumping across the galaxy, stuff like that. So I really started to see a lot more of the Star Wars that I had read about because I played the Star Wars role-playing game system because I love Star Wars. And I saw a lot of familiar language and mechanics and things like that. They do use the vehicle rules for Genesis, though, as opposed to the Star Wars role-playing game vehicle rules, which is, in my opinion, a good thing. I think they nailed it with Genesis and the vehicle rules department. One of my favorite things in the third chapter of the vehicle rules is it's talking about those faster-than-light jumps, and it talks about utilizing gravitational rifts to slingshot your ship to go faster than the speed of light basically increasing your movement speed by up to 50%, but it is a daunting roll, which is four negative dice, but you upgrade one of them, so it's a red and three purple dice, and if you get a bunch of threat or a despair on it, then you're just sucked into the black hole. And obviously, in actual science, as you understand, just kill everybody, but the more interesting thing is an alternate reality or a wormhole to another part of the galaxy that you weren't expecting. And maybe the engines are failing, so you crash land on a random world that you weren't expecting. Maybe it's undiscovered, and so it's a whole thing. It's one of the reasons I love Genesis, is crazy things like that can happen due to a failed role. And I respect the fact that they include that stuff in the book, because that's the kind of stuff that I think up at the table, and my players get mad at me. But if it's in the book, then I can be like, it's not my fault, don't look at me like that. They don't actually get mad at me. Most. Of them. Okay, and then we get into chapters four and five, which are the lore of the galaxy, essentially. I know in the intro I talked about you get a bunch of lore about how the world got to where it is currently, which is true. This chapter is the state of the world now. So this is what player characters, certain player characters could reasonably be expected to know, especially if they're talking about their home world or world of their species that they may have researched even though they grew up on a different planet things like that but i absolutely love chapter four is the galaxy and so it's talking about the domain of the galactic council and the areas that you can be expected to be relatively safe but one thing i especially love about the current state of the galaxy and just the nature of the twilight imperium universe in general is the fact that you are in a space opera that is i don't want to say post-apocalyptic but it's after the fall of the great empire but not in the good way that star wars is but in the oh there was some political tensions and stuff like that but we all had it pretty good and now it's an age of darkness and we're having to like rediscover all these worlds and try to put the pieces back together but oh no there's some remnants from the old empire that want to kill everything also shout out for the planet entry for Mechatol Rex, which is the seat of power for the Galactic Council. It lists one of their major exports as war. Great stuff. So I forgot to include this bit. This is our galaxy. It's the Milky Way that you're playing in, in the distant future. Our planet is called Jord, or Yord. I don't know if it's a soft J, but it's the ancestral home of the human species. You look at the picture, hey, I know that place. Also, major export weapons. So good to know that humanity has not learned any lessons. But I do appreciate that this universe has a unique name for Earth, because obviously we call Earth because it's the Earth, but that has another meaning. And then also like, uh, like the MCU calls it like Terra, or they call us Terrans, because that's the Latin for Earth. I just like that they came up with something different. That's all I'm trying to say, because I fully expected when I saw that it was our galaxy for it to be Earth or Terra or something along those lines. And I hadn't seen Yord before or Jord 
I'm pretty sure it's Yord, now that I'm saying it over and over again. It's like Scandinavian Norse stuff, J. Another thing I really appreciate is you get a couple page spread in the galaxy chapter for each of the Galactic Council planets, like the main core worlds. And what I appreciate is you get the Kelleris alert sidebar panels, which are just, hey, here's the briefing that you get from the Galactic Council on this planet. Here's what to look out for while you're here. And they're color-coded. So green, it's, yeah, you could die, but probably not. And then it's yellow where it's, keep an eye out for things. They might kill you. Visitors aren't welcome there. And then there's obviously red Kelleris alert where it's like, we legally can't tell you to go here but there's a lot of things going on that you should probably go deal with. But if you get caught, we didn't send you because you're probably going to get caught. So be careful. Or it's just like this planet only allows a single species on here. And so if you try to go and you're not that species, you're going to get turned away. And if they catch you on the planet, they're going to have a lot of questions about why you're there. And there's not going to be anything we can do about it because you broke the law to get there. And then the next chapter, the Kelleris Charge is what it's called, it has a lot of information on the Keller organization as a whole, the Galactic Council, the headquarters, that kind of thing. And then a bunch more planetary profile pages and spreads about, these are more of the planets that you can be expected as a player or as a GM to interact with during a campaign. These are the places where the big plot hooks are and the big threats and all that kind of stuff. So the previous chapter, the galaxy is more informational, like. Here are some of the home planets that a player character might be from, or where you might go to restock things because they are friendly to the Galactic Council, etc., etc. And then chapter five is, here's the bad places that you're going to go to and you're going to have to fight. But you get a ton of information about the Kelleris organization and the Galactic Council and kind of their function within the world. And so I would say if you're a player, probably read at least the first part of this chapter Maybe not the planetary profiles because there might be some mysteries and plot hooks that your DM doesn't want you to know about. But this first half of this chapter really informs who your character is. So GMs, read through it. Make sure it's there's not any additional information in there that you don't want your players to know about. But if you're good to give them the go-ahead, I would recommend players reading this section of the book. But I really do love this section. You get huge sections talking about the various factions that you might run up against and their motivations and their desires and their history in relation to not only the Galactic Council, but the history that you read in the beginning of the book. And there's so much good plot hooks and storytelling opportunities in this section. It's really well written. Uh, it very much reminds me of the old Star Wars uh, source books that they would release with all these different planetary profiles that they drop and they're great. Uh, if you're looking to run a sci-fi campaign and you're not even necessarily interested in the Twilight Imperium setting or even the Genesis rule book, this is a fantastic book for just plot hooks of a space opera. I would highly recommend checking out this book just for the lore. And then you have the adversary section, which is the bestiary or bestiary for this book. And then chapter seven is the game master chapter talks about the common tropes of space operas how to build adventures for twilight imperium and space operas in general once again really good information and insights for any gm looking to run a space opera campaign and then lastly something that D, &D books don't do that this book does and i know other tabletop role-playing games do it too but i'm not talking about them in this video this book has an index where if you need to know a specific rule or item or faction or planet, you can just go to the back of the book and see what page it's on. And that's nice. That's really nice. Even in the world of PDFs and OCR and bookmarked and all that kind of stuff where you can control F or open the sidebar, having an index is nice. So I want to say kudos to the team that did this book and do all the Genesis books. Here's the core rule book. If I go to the back, and I know it's here because I've used my Genesis book before. I have an actual play podcast that uses the Genesis system. Eberron Reed, link down below. Boom. Index. It's an index where I can go be like, hey, what's proficiency mean? And I know that's on the page. But yes, I guess that's a good time. I need to do a plug. If you are intrigued by the system and you never played it before, you like the Twilight Imperium, but want a, more of a picture on how Genesis as a system functions, you can go check out Eberron Renewed. 
our second campaign is all Genesis, and there's some homebrew stuff in there by me, but in terms of the rules, we stick pretty close to the book, so go check it out, Link. Overall, I think this is an outstanding space opera sci-fi tabletop role-playing game book. If you are a fan of the Twilight Imperium board games, and specifically the factions and characters and lore surrounding that board game, this is a must-buy for you if you want to get to pl actually play a role-playing game in that board game universe. But additionally, if you're just looking for some good insights on space opera, role-playing games, sci-fi, and you want some plot hooks and interesting species that you can hack for your own system if you're not going to use Genesis, still go pick this book up. Thank you to Edge Studio for sending me a copy of this book for review purposes. I very much appreciate it. And I will have a link to go pre-order the book down below in the description and in the first comment of this video. So go check out down there to go pre-order a copy of the book. Or if you're living in Europe, some areas already have it out. So you can go to a, your friendly local game store and just buy it. Just get it right now. If you're in the US or other parts of Europe, gotta wait a little bit longer. If the agenda mechanic that they use in this book really intrigues you, you can go check out this video right here where I talk about obligation, which is something else from the Star Wars fantasy flight role-playing game that brings in the character's backstory into the mechanics of the game.